very warm welcome to NTV this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Honorable Minister, um, we would like to just delve quickly into uh, these two bills that have been passed, uh, one of them being received with a, a bit of mixed reaction, the anti-pornography bill. Just tell us a bit about that and uh, what, what are your thoughts on the, on the bill and, and the reactions towards the bill? I'm so clear conscienced because I know the bill wants to address a melancholy uh, situation that unfortunately had overwhelmed our society and we thought uh, it was time to correct it so it doesn't get further. The bill has clearly stipulated uh, now the law, the act um, uh, tends to bring into our society decency and remove anything that is going to indignify our person and especially where the human body is, you know, sought as an instrument of entertainment without, uh, you know, maintaining the dignity with which God gave this body to be. And um, we're never saying anything indecent, anything immodest, anything vulgar, anything that, you know, irritates the moral value and quality of the human person, this bill catches it. All right. One of the things that has stood out uh, in the anti-pornography bill is the mini skirt. Uh, is there anything in the bill that handles or addresses the mini skirt specifically? I want to say that nowhere and at no time does the nomenclature mini skirt surface in the bill. Okay, in the law, for that matter. And um, I am only surprised that people have come up with many skirts to the extent that they even baptized me minister of many skirts, <laughs> right? But I don't mind there. What I want to tell the people is that um, we are not, we are not um, looking for persons who are dressed in a particular way. What we have stipulated and very clearly put in the bill is that wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever you are saying, it must be nothing vulgar in it. And so in a bill there is a clause which states that the bill criminalizes anybody who poses exposing certain, we call delicate parts of the human body, especially of the female, which are provocative and in swimming to sex. These are the thighs, mm -hmm. the buttocks, and the genitalia, all right? And the breasts. We have known this in our culture, that these are areas that must be well covered and can only be exposed in the bedroom, not on the streets of Kampala. Now, of course, hearing this, they say, oh, which other dress can live out this, if not the miniskirt? So they're saying miniskirt? Are, are, are being fought against. We're not fighting against the men's cats. We're fighting against indecency. All right. So anybody who dresses, exposing this person, is indecent, and we are not looking for what the, what the dress one or she is putting. I think the, the question for some people is how short is too short? How revealing is too revealing? I mean, how have, have you put measures in place in this law that will help you fight you know, the indecency that you were trying to fight through the enactment of this law? We don't intend to come to a men's time where there was a measurement above the knee or below the knee, etc. No. Here we are calling upon the conscience of the people, your own consciousness. What do you see that is not comfortable for anybody to look at you? And we have known that ladies, when they put their skirts very short, they really irritate the people. Mm -hmm. Ladies, when they open their boobs, call them boobs, eh? yes, they are called they, they really <laughs> irritate people. And so, here, we are not going to put tape measures or ask the police to go move around with tape measures. And you get anybody on the street, please measure if the person has a lower or a higher, that's when you can arrest or, or, or leave to go. Mm -hmm. No, just look at the word decency. Now, when you make it relative, then you go wrong. 
because there are some standards that are established and they are good and bad for everybody. So you're appealing to the moral fabric of Ugandans? Indeed. All right. Um, there's been a, a backlash. I hear that downtown when, you know, women go there and they're wearing short skirts, some of them are actually undressed. What, what are your thoughts um, on I this? I have heard of this. I, first of all, I want to be very, very sympathetic with those who have fallen victim of this uh, reaction. Um, and therefore appeal to those who do that, that that's not the way to move. Because the only person who has the powers to arrest and, and, and put in custody is the law enforcement uh, entity, which is the police. All right. All right. So the police would be left to do its job. However, if you irritate and provoke the people, then I blame you also. Why did you in the first place come with such a scantily covering cloth? And you displaying double standards? And then uh, why? Who? And you displaying double standards? Absolutely no. I say, just as people could act for a murderer, one murder somebody in cold blood, what will the people do? They will react and jump on that person. But that's not right. Absolutely, it is not right. But at the same time, we say, you, the person who creates such an atmosphere, should be blameworthy. Why did you do it in the first place? I think that the law should have measures, like I asked earlier, measures to say, you know, this is too short, and, and not have Ugandans take the law into their own hands. So there is no reason why, you know, a woman who has gone down to a town, rather, to do her shopping, is undressed because someone thinks that, you know, her skirt is too short. No, everybody will know what is short and what is bad. It's not Lokoro to come and determine this. You yourself will sit in your room as you dress to come out and you will determine that this is comfortable enough for me and for everybody else will see me as a decently dressed woman. And you get out. All right. Just uh, finally, as we wrap up, what, what are your, we'll just talk briefly about the anti-homosexuality law now. Uh, what are your thoughts, especially towards the reaction from um, some of the leaders from the West? The anti-homosexuality bill has been assented today, so it's now law, and this law takes effect with immediate assenting moment, mm -hmm. and it will only have to maybe wait for other processes, the simple ones of the statutory statement that the minister has to put, giving uh, period when this law will be gazetted and then when it will commence officially. Now, for me, and I know for many other Ugandans, this is a great achievement for this country because this was a menace and it has brought a lot of deterioration of de moral decay in our society. I was more pitiful really of small children who were always victims of these unruly persons who have been very, very, very uh, touched by cases of persons who have been coming to me, having been damaged by this practice. And so when I see it, it's law, I'm so happy. And I say, salvation has come to this house. Men's Ugandans are going to be safe from this atrocious uh, treatment of these tending persons to, to, to homosexuality. Now you're saying, what are you going to say about the reactions? Really, I'm one of those persons, and I want to join my president here, who don't care what people say about my You're not my concerned values, about public my opinion. Values. Mm. No, absolutely. Because after all, this life, it's me to live it. And I must be responsible of this life. There is no way I should begin to check myself every step because someone is watching. And if I don't impress that person, then I will be living artificially. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts, Father Lokodo. I've been speaking to the Honorable Minister, taking your questions on the anti-pornography bill and the anti-homosexuality bill on NTV Tech 5.